How's everybody doing? Everybody glad to be here? Nice. <laughs> so this is our second to last week in the Summer of the Psalms. <clears throat> um, it seems like every summer that we do this, at least that I'm aware of, it always ends with us saying it went by a lot faster than we, than we thought it was going to go. <clears throat> um, which kind of seems to be like a general theme. Everything goes faster than we thought, and we also should have taken longer in something than we should have. That always goes back to those two things. <clears throat> um, but I mean, it's, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a great summer. Um, it was awesome that we uh, Roland uh, got to come up and preach, and Rob came up and preached, and we got to all be a part of that. Um, and um, it's just always a it's always a, it's always a good time. And so in two weeks, uh, we'll be headed back into uh, Daniel, the second part of Daniel, and we will continue to uh, work our way um, through the book of Daniel as well. And so today we are in Psalm 147, which was the passage that we already um, read together during the uh, congregational response reading. And Psalm 147 uh, is what we refer to as a a hymn of praise. Um, You might have noticed earlier that the psalm starts with praise the Lord. And it also ends with, uh, with a cry to praise the Lord, um, as well. And Psalm 147 is one of the last five Psalms in the book. And so if you go and look at the, the end of the, the book of Psalms, you'll see that the last five Psalms, all of them together start with praise the Lord and they all end with praise the Lord, which is part, which is one of the reasons why we refer, it's referred to as a hymn of praise. And this psalm is believed to have been written during the rebuilding of Jerusalem uh, during a time of exile. And as we go through the psalm together, what we'll see is the psalmist goes back and forth between praising the Lord for how he takes care of his people, uh, the brokenhearted, and also praising the Lord for how he cares for and has control over all of his uh, creation. Dang, man. And so looking at a, a, a psalm that is referred to as a hymn of praise, uh, praise is something that would hopefully, something that would come natural uh, to God's people. <clears throat> um, praising the Lord is something that is good, it, should, it is pleasant, and it is fitting that we would be a people who enjoy singing praise uh, to God who is the ruler of the universe. Um, he is the one who spoke into existence all of creation. And that God, the God, is one who is worthy of praise. And it is good and it is pleasant and it is fitting that God, the one who spoke into existence all of creation, would be praised by his people who he has saved and he has redeemed. Um, Psalm 147 tells us that he determines the number of stars in the sky and that he knows them by name. Uh, it says that he builds up Jerusalem and he gathers the outcast of Israel. It, the Psalm tells us that he heals the brokenhearted. This psalm tells this psalm tells us that uh, this our God lifts up the humble and that He casts the wicked uh, to the ground, and so this God, the God, our God, He is more than worthy of receiving our praise, and He delights when He receives praise from us. Um, the brokenhearted, the humble, the outcast that this psalm references is a description that the psalmist is using for God's people um, who have been in exile. Um, and with that in mind, this psalm is one that is is and should be encouraging to God's people. It should be encouraging to the brokenhearted, the humble, and the outcasts. This is encouragement for the Lord's people. This psalm is encouragement to the Lord's people to not lose heart in the midst of hard times, uh, in the midst of awful times, in the midst of pain. And so while this psalm was important for this historic people, uh, it is just important for God's people today as it was important for them in Jerusalem then. Because in this life, in our life, in a variety of different ways, um, we endure much in this life. And that is something that is promised uh, from God to us, that we do endure much in this life. Because we live in a, a sin, we are sinful people. We live in a world filled with sin. We live in a broken and fractured creation. Uh, we will endure much and Again, that is something that God has let us know. Um, and so sometimes, um, a lot of times in this life, uh, for the brokenhearted, uh, people say uh, terrible things to us. And sometimes, 
uh, people do uh, awful and terrible things to us. And sometimes it might be because of your faith. You might be persecuted for your faith. Sometimes when people do these terrible things to us, uh, the excuse that for their reasoning is because of something that you might have done, which is not acceptable. And sometimes these awful things happen to us simply because we were, we were at that place in that moment, present uh, at that time. Um, and so the brokenhearted endure, we endure a lot of terrible things. And a lot of oftentimes these things come from those people around us. Sometimes people we trust, sometimes people we love. Uh, sometimes, again, it's just because we are there at that time. But again, sometimes people say these things. Sometimes they do these things. And like we said a second ago, sometimes it's just because we're there in those moments. Um, and we each know what those things are for each one of us in our, our personal life. Um, but as the brokenhearted, um, it is important that we, we must remember and we need to re be reminded uh, that the one who the Psalm 147 just said, name the stars in the sky, uh, provides for us uh, great hope. And he provides for us salvation. And it's important that we remember with that comes healing from our Savior. Uh, this psalm, it's a great psalm for encouragement for us. It's a great encouragement for the brokenhearted because the brokenhearted need uh, this psalm. We need this word. Um, all of us need Psalm 147, and we need encouragement, and we need healing uh, in this life. Um, it is often that for each, for we let um, our brothers and sisters uh, in the faith stay uh, where they are. It's often that we let the brokenhearted stay where they are in those times. Um, so often we don't encourage or help one another to move forward um, in this life. And a lot of the times we let one, an one another stay in, in that place. And there is a time when somebody is crying and somebody is pouring out to you, sharing with you how the world has knocked them down. There is a time to listen and, of course, to, to pray with them. And that's what we need to do. But there comes a time that when, um, out of love for one another, that we go beyond listening and we start to encourage and help one another to move forward uh, in this life. And the church, brothers and sisters in Christ, we should, out of love, uh, help each other to get back up and to continue to progress forward uh, in the race. <clears throat> and so we've probably heard the phrase because it's become quite common. It's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay uh, to stay there. We must love our brothers and sisters enough in this life to help them move forward, or as I say a lot, stumble forward uh, in this life. Um, Galatians 6 says that when that we should help help each other get back up and and put our, our feet in the pro in the proper place so that we have no choice but to finish the race. And so with that in mind, uh, we need to know that the Lord is not pleased when the brokenhearted uh, stay complacent. And as Christians, we are not to be ruled by the pains of this world. We are not to be complacent. We are not to stay in the same place. And we are not to be ruled by the pains of this world. And so what this means is that we must not open the wounds that we have from this world. We must not open them and pour salt in them and continue to relive and stay in those moments and not progress forward. Because what Psalm 147 says is that the Lord provides healing to his people. It says that he binds up our wounds. And for the Lord binds up our wounds, that means that they, that they heal. And scars are evidence of our healings in this world. And so this psalm is a reminder to us to trust in the one uh, who the psalm tells us um, put the clouds in the sky because he is great and he is abundant uh, in power. His understanding uh, is beyond measure. Um, and what this means is that the Lord does understand us. Uh, the Lord, he understands you and he, under he understands me. He understands each one of us. Um, and he also sympathizes with us, which we'll get to here in a little bit. Um, but to know that the one who spoke into existence, named the stars, put the clouds in the sky, to know that he understands us beyond measure is actually very, very good news. And so our God, uh, our Savior Christ, uh, he walked, <clears throat> we, what we know from the gospel is that he walked on the grounds of, of, of this world. 
the sinful world uh, that his, his people uh, built up. When he walked in this world, he felt the pains of sin. He was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was abused, and he was killed. Um, but he did rise and rise and from the dead and ascend. Um, but what this, what we know from Christ and his ministry is that he does understand us. Uh, and again, he understands us uh, beyond measure. And while it may feel like at times uh, that he is absent, uh, we must be reminded and we must know that he, that our God has not fleed and he has not run away. And thankfully, just because we feel like something is true, that does not actually make it a reality. Just because we feel like God is far off doesn't mean that he is neglecting us. Uh, we, what we know from Scripture and the truth of who God is is that God is omnipresence, that he is here, and he is always there. He never leaves us, he never retreats, and he is always present. And in his presence, he is also very active in our lives every single day. And with this, he understands what we go through and what you've gone through, or you're going through, what I'm going through. Which means that, he, this means that he also knows how important it is for us to not stay stagnant. He knows how important it is for his people to not allow the pains of this world to consume us or to let us find our identity in the pains of this world. Because as followers of Christ, we must be reminded that our identity is found in Christ and is found in Christ alone. And so he lifts us up, and we can praise God for that. He lifts us up, and he casts the wicked to the ground. And this, so, in addition, we can continue to find security in the Lord because he lifts us up, because he casts the wicked to the ground. And so we're secure, not because of our strength, but because of the gifts of, the, of God. Our security is found in who God is and what God has extended to us. And the Lord has given his people the gift of faith. The Lord finds pleasure in those who fear him and those uh, who find hope in him. I said it earlier that the Lord puts the clouds in the sky. In addition, Psalm 147 tells us that he prepares the rain which we receive. And we can and should always thank the Lord for, for that. Right? This is Texas. We always appreciate the shade of a good cloud, right? And we never complain when it rains, even when it comes in remarkably mass quantities at once. We don't complain about those things. And so we do thank the Lord for hanging the clouds in the sky. We do thank the Lord for the rain that he provides to us. Um, and whether it be the horse or the strength of men, that's not where the, the Lord finds his ultimate delight. Um, is he pleased with his creation? Is he pleased with the horse? Like, absolutely. Scripture tells us that. But what we're talking about here is something, is something more. What we're talking about is how the Lord finds pleasure in those who fear him and those who find hope in him. Um, those who he has brought salvation and faith to. Uh, that pleases him. That delights him. Um, the text is telling us that when God's people are in awe of him, it brings them delights. Uh, when we find our hope in him, it pleases him. Uh, this Psalm 147 says that the Lord takes pleasure when we find hope in him. And when we praise him, when we pray to him, when we trust in his word, when we're obedient to him, uh, that brings him a delight. Verse 9 says, He gives the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. And so what Psalm 147 is telling us, not just, I mean, verse 9, yes, but it tells us that he takes care of his creation. He feeds the beast in the field, and he hears the raven when he cries. Uh, the beast in the field, uh, he provides what they need. The ra when the raven cries, he provides what they need. Um, when the psalm was written, um, when the psalm was written, <clears throat> this was an unthinkable thought to the reader, uh, because the the raven is considered an unclean animal. It was viewed as a filthy nuisance. Um, at the time this was written, if every raven fell from the sky and just was died and was just laying there. The only response uh, to who this was written to would have been irritation because of for an inconvenience uh, that their laying on the ground would have caused them. They would not have uh, they would not have been missed. Um, it would have been nothing like when you're driving down the road, um, and like you see um, a, a beloved pet on the ground, like you have a reaction to that. If, if the, when the raven 
dies, it was almost like a celebration. It was like, who cares? This filthy nuisance is gone. Um, what the scripture is telling us is that the Lord hears the cry of the raven that was viewed as an as unclean. It was a, it was a nuisance. It was undesirable. Um, and for the reader, this would have been an earth shattering, unthinkable thought that the Lord would care about the raven. The reason I was spending a little bit of extra time on that is because if the Lord hears the cry of the raven, which he does, scripture tells us he does, then you can have absolute confidence that the Lord hears you when you cry out to him. Um, because we are his beloved creation. Uh, when he created us, it was very good. And we are his family and he hears us. Um, and so if he can hear some bird, then when you cry out to him in praise and in prayer, um, it delights him. It pleases him. He enjoys when we go to him over and over and over again. Um, and when we cry out to him, the Lord hears us and he provides healing. And so my question for you, a silent question, is um, do you trust that the Lord hears you when you cry out to him? Um, do you trust and believe that he is listening, that he hears you, that he delights in your words, um, that he's happy when you come to him? Um, do you actually trust him when you go to him? Or does it feel empty? Because I can, well, I'm well, here to assure you today that the Lord does hear you and he delights in your prayers. He enjoys your praise. It makes him happy and he loves it when you come to him. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, those who are in awe of him, uh, those who find a hope and trust in him and his steadfast love. The Lord takes pleasure and delights in your words to him. Spurgeon says, um, there is no heaven either in this world or the world to come for people who do not praise God. If you do not enter into the spirits of, and worship of heaven, how should the spirits of joy of heaven enter into you? The very simple essence of being reunited with the Lord, uh, experiencing heaven, is having a, realized, uh, having a, a connection uh, with the Savior, with the God of the universe. Um, being connected with him is the essence of the beginning of that. Um, praising the Lord is the beginning of that. Praying to him, celebrating him, worshiping him. Um, that is, as Spurgeon says, the, the beginning. All of the Lord's people, Jerusalem, all of the Lord's people should enjoy uh, praising the Lord. And we have great reason to do so because we are his people. He has saved us. He has brought us in and he has called us uh, his own. Um, praising the Lord is what we, each one of us, have been created uh, to do. It's what we've been redeemed uh, to do. And the Lord has great reason uh, to be praised. Uh, the psalm tells us that nature functions as he desires it to. Uh, he cares for all of his creation, but he most definitely cares about you and he cares about me. Um, and while we were rebellious sinners, he takes us as we are, saves us, cleans us up, and heals us. Towards the end of the psalm, we see the Lord's favor for his chosen people. We see that he provides for his people. He provides for us a future. Uh, he provides for his people peace. He provides for his people their, what we need, food and drink. And uh, again, he takes care of us and he gives us what we need in this life. Um, and the, what is to come. And so what we see in this passage is a people that are very needy and very dependent, um, which is something that we can relate to and we have in common. We are needy and we are dependent people. And what we also see is a very merciful and graceful God who takes great care of his needy and dependent people. And for that, again, he is worthy of our praise. And for the brokenhearted, which is us, uh, we must be know and be reminded that he does, he heals. Um, he heals us of our sin. He heals us of what we endure in this life. And trusting in the Lord, trusting in his salvation, trusting in his power, trusting in his promise to heal. Again, it is important that we don't just sit there and drown in the hurt and pain of this world. Um, just because it's comfortable does not make it good for us. 
Um, just because healing is foreign to, to some of us doesn't mean that we should run from it. Um, but the Lord is good, and his healing is good, and his promises are good. So it is important that we do not stay in our pain, but we continue to go forward and allow our family, our church, our community to aid us and help us. Those are gifts from the Lord, and it is important that we don't push those away, but we accept the offer of love from one another to step and way and move out of that pain and continue to progress uh, in healing. Uh, Hebrews chapter 4 tells us in verses 15 and 16, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we said earlier that Jesus sympathizes us with us in this life, and he identifies with his people. Uh, the brokenhearted and the outcasts, um, because of Christ's uh, ex human experience here on earth and his experience of suffering, he identifies with the brokenhearted. He identifies uh, with the outcasts. What separates Christ is Christ was fully God and fully human, and so therefore he was able to experience this without sin. I don't want to brush over that. Um, but we, it is really easy to forget um, that the our God, the supreme, the supreme being, the intelligent designer, the creator, the author of creation, the author of everything that is good, who spoke into existence all of creation, it is easy for us to forget that Christ sympathizes with us in this life. And that is one of the precious truths about the, the truth of the gospel, is that Christ does sympathize with us. And he identifies with us. And when we cry out to him in pain, sometimes it's some, some things that we cause, but a lot of times it's things that the outside causes. When we cry out to him with whatever it is that we have, the only good prayers are honest prayers. Um, when we cry out to him, he understands and he identifies. And that is because of the pain and suffering that Christ uh, experienced on this life, in this world when he walks. Um, our God understands uh, us when we go to him. And that is very, very good news because Jesus does sympathize with us in this life. Uh, so when we go to him and we cry out to him in prayers, uh, he understands. And when we, again, when we cry out to him with praise, he loves it and he, he receives it. Um, and because of Christ sympathizing with us, because Christ, Christ understands us, it gives us even more reason to run to him, to go to him in prayer, and take everything to him and hope and drop it off and give it to him. Um, another one from Hebrews chapter one, verse three. Uh, he's the, he is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the power of his words. After making purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Everything we see in this text today is about what the Lord does, not what we do. Everything we see in this psalm is about what Christ does. Uh, Christ builds up. Christ heals. He lifts up. He covers the heavens. He names the stars. He gives the beast food. He strengthens. He makes peace. He sends out. He gives and he scatters. That is who Christ is, and that's what Christ does. And when we look at this psalm over again, like, everything is what the Lord does, what the Lord does, what the Lord does. And everything about us is, it's what we need. It's what we have to receive. Um, everything in here is, again, it is a praise on praise of God for the, for the brokenhearted. Because the brokenhearted, we need a savior. We need a, a rescuer. Um, we need help. Um, again, from Hebrews 1, 3, I'd just like to read again. He, Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprints of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Uh, Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is the great healer for the brokenhearted. And I pr promise you, we can trust him with everything. Uh, we can find great hope in Christ, and you can have faith that he will take 
not just good care of you, but perfect care of you. Uh, and with that, we have great reason to, con to continue to progress in praising the Lord. Um, my hope is that this psalm today uh, will continue to build up a heart of thankfulness in each one of us, uh, that we will reflect on how the Lord has provided for us, and that we will trust that he will continue to provide for us every single day. And what we know from Scripture is that the Lord is always faithful to his people, always, uh, even during hard times and even during times of, of exile. Uh, the Lord is always continuously and continuing to preserve his people. And may we each continue to go forward, growing in thankfulness in the Lord, uh, handing all things over to him, trusting in him for healing, and continuing to grow in him uh, with praise. So let's pray together. Lord, we uh, thank you for another day that you've given us. Uh, we thank you for your word, and uh, we just thank you that you are the great healer, the ultimate provider. Um, and we just always, we want to continue to always celebrate you for just who you are, uh, being the author of creation. And may we never forget the easy things it is to forget, uh, that you hang the clouds and the stars, you know the stars by name, uh, that the beast in the field has food because you provide it, um, that the birds, you hear their cry because you listen. And may, as we, we remember that and we find comfort in that, Lord, may we just continue to remember that we are, you have a, there's a special care and love that you have for us, um, and that you don't neglect your people, uh, that you provide for us, that you hear our prayers, that you enjoy our praise, um, and that you just delight in saving your people. And in so you love it when we fear you, uh, and we love when we find our hope in you. You love rescuing us. Um, and that you also um, love and enjoy our obedience as well, Lord. And just pray that we can continue to move forward in um, um, just embracing your healing, um, moving forward in your obedience, and we just continue to move forward and grow in praise toward to you, Lord, in this life. And as we continue, as we start a new week next week, Lord, I just pray that these things are remembered. Uh, that we continuously have uh, increasing clear sight and vision for what it is that you have for us in any week, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.